right, let's take a look at some of the network basics and Linux. So Linux, like many operating systems, deals with a lot of your networking for you. Uh, the way that the network stack, all of the magic behind the scenes that makes the network work is built into Linux kernel as part of the operating system. And the operating system exposes some tools and commands to you to allow you to change the state of the network, just like you couldn't in Windows, change the configuration, monitor the configuration, and so on and so forth. So a lot of what I'm going to show you, I'll, we'll do the CLI commands, and then I'll briefly touch. There's, there's GUI command, I mean, there's programs, GUI programs that will do a lot of this as well. If you're old school or if you don't have a GUI, you have to do it on the command line. But, I mean, if you're just using Ubuntu desktop because you want to check email, you're probably not going to be firing the command line to do these. So it's worth seeing it the other way too. So the kind of core networking command on Linux, although it's going away a little bit, is ifconfig. ifconfig stands for interface config, and it basically is the command line tool that allows you to monitor and control your interfaces. So if you're doing this on the VM, you'll probably see two, only your second one won't say WLAN, it'll probably just say uh, ETH something or other. Uh, but whatever it says, that's fine. You all should have the first one. The first one is what we call the loopback interface. That's essentially a fake network interface that just sends packets back to itself. So it's handy for testing. I mean, that's your local host interface. So when you ping local host, it goes to that interface. It doesn't represent a real connection anywhere, but it's something that's built into the kernel to basically make it easier to send traffic to yourself. Uh, and there's desirable times to do that. The other interface, if you have it, will probably be your real network connection. Obviously on the VM it gets a little bit more complicated because it's a real network connection to your host machine and then you're actually using your host machine's real network connection out to the internet. Um, but I'm not on a VM, so this is in fact my wireless card. Wireless cards almost always are labeled WLAN followed by sequential numbers depending on how many you have in your computer. Uh, wired cards are generally labeled ETH something, so ETH for Ethernet followed by numbers that count up as well. There's a few other types that fall in here. I mean, when you get into doing more advanced stuff like dealing with uh, virtualization, some of the stuff on the back end, you can have bridged adapters and all this other stuff that's designed to handle some of these more advanced network configurations, but we won't get into that. If you look at each of these, it gives you most of the information you would expect to associate with a network interface. I don't know what people's network background is, but network adapters have what we call IP addresses. That's kind of their network routable address that you can use to access them. You'll see that on here. Uh, that would be this first one. There are always these four byte, um, these four byte values where it's the bytes are separated by dots and we read them as numbers. So that's my address currently on the CU wireless network. Uh, it also, you'll see the INET6, that's my IPv6 address. IPv6 is what's in theory replacing traditional IPv4, but we're not there yet. My computer's capable of picking one up because this network must be providing one to me, but uh, it's not something to really use. Other stuff you're going to see on here, um, the very first line will kind of tell you what type of internet connection, or what, what type of network connection this is. Most of your real ones are going to be Ethernet, because that's kind of the underlying standard both for wired and wireless connections. Next to that, you'll have what's called the hardware address. For Ethernet, this is your MAC address, which you may be familiar with. This is basically a unique address associated with each individual adapter. This tends to be static, although there are ways to change it. This is like basically cooked into your connection uh, or your adapter on a given computer. It'll be different for every adapter on your computer. This can be dynamically assigned or changed to suit your configuration, and it gets changed a lot. Um, there's some other stuff on here. We're not going to worry too much about it. It gives you some stats about the network. Rx for received packets, Tx for transmit packets. It'll tell you if there's been errors with any of them. I mean, a healthy connection looks like this. There aren't really any errors. We're not really dropping anything. Um, and then some more advanced information in here dealing with kind of some of the more advanced configuration of your network interface. ifconfig will do more than just display this stuff. Uh, you can use ifconfig to basically change any of this configuration in here. When you change it in ifconfig, it's not generally static. If you change it, but when you reboot your computer, it all gets reset. There's another way to make it static, but if you just need to like change it temporarily or just change it for the time being, you can use ifconfig to do that. Uh, you can do, I think ifconfig has a help, yeah. Um, you can always, we're not going to go into a lot of these, obviously do man ifconfig and you can read the man page with all the dirty details of everything ifconfig can do. But uh, some of the basic things, most of the ifconfig commands go ifconfig, the name of the interface you want to configure. So this would be WLAN 0 for me, 
And then you can do things like turn it on or off. So if I do down, that should turn it off. You have to be root to run a lot of these commands because you're kind of changing a core property of the system, so it doesn't let just anyone do it. You can use the sudo command to uh, basically allow you to do that. So with that, it should kill my wireless connection. Let's see. Yeah, so when I do I have config now, my wireless connection is no longer there. I'm going to use another command called ping. Ping is a command we use, I mean, it's available on pretty much every operating system in the world. It's a network testing command that basically sends a packet or a, a series of packets to whatever address you specify here and then just sees if you get a response. It's basically a way to test if you can connect to something. So if I do this, it should fail. And that's it failing, not displaying anything. Uh, to stop ping on Linux on Windows, it just runs three times and then stops. On Linux, you have to do Control C and that'll stop it. Well, it should stop it. It's probably stuck looking something up. Uh, if it were working correctly, Control C would stop it. My guess is it's trying to look up Google, and as soon as it gets a response, it'll recognize my Control C. But none of it's working because I don't have an internet connection. So, if I wanted to turn that connection back on. So I can do spell. So I can just basically do the reverse. If I wanted to turn my wireless connection back on, I would do sudo I have config wlan zero, only this time I would say up instead of down. So if I do that, cool. So if I do that, and so now if I do I have config again. It might, you can see my card's back. Now if I try to do ping again, oh, I'm not somewhere. So no, it still doesn't think it has a connection. Probably because I broke it on this side. All right. Well, so I'll get this working in a minute. Uh, one of the downsides to using I have config like this right now is you will notice up here in the right hand corner of my Ubuntu screen there's an additional icon that basically is the GUI control for the status of my network. So that I have down thing I just did to turn off WLAN 0 would be essentially equivalent to me unchecking this enable wireless. The downside to this is sometimes I have config fights with this and it's unclear who's in charge. And my guess is that's what's happening now. Um, you can disable this altogether if you just always want to use ifconfig, and on some machines, if you're on like a server or something, you don't have this, so all you have is ifconfig. When you have both of them, it can sometimes lead to interesting issues about who's in charge. So I'm just going to turn on and off via that as well, and hopefully that'll fix back up whatever issues happen with my network. Um, the point being, most of the time, especially on servers and on systems that you don't have uh, a GUI on, you're going to be using IF config to configure things. Um, so when you do have a GUI like this, you generally wouldn't use IF config. All of the settings you see here are actually basically mirrored. If I go to like edit connections, I can do essentially similar what you could do on Windows. If I go to edit, you'll see a lot of the similar options are here. So I can do things like change my IP address, change my IPv6 address, so on and so forth. Pretty much everything I can do here, I could also do via IF config, but sometimes they fight. Let's see if my internet's back. Cool. So now you'll see my ping commands are actually working. So when ping works, let me shrink a little bit so it doesn't get split across the lines. Can everyone still see that okay? So when ping works, what you'll see here, it's basically, it's going to run until I hit Control-C to stop it, unlike Windows, which just runs three times unless you give it an extra flag. It's actually nicer like this by default, I think, because when you're running ping, often you just want to pull it up in a window and have it keep running so you can see if something breaks. But what you're seeing here is essentially Google.com got translated to an IP address. So these are what we call DNS addresses. They're what we type on the internet because they're nice and human readable. But all of them correspond to an actual IP address, which is at 7.4. It's about to just be off the screen. It's also here. 
Then what we're seeing is essentially I'm getting a response from what the local Google server is. A big company like Google, that Google.com doesn't just refer to one computer for obvious reasons, right? If everyone in the world's Google.com request went to a single computer, we'd be in trouble. Instead, Google must have a data center sitting somewhere down in Denver, if you're reading this. Um, and that's actually what's serving my Google request right now. So Ping's telling me I'm getting a response back from that. This is the IP address it's at. And then it gives me some timing statistics. Uh, these are what we call latencies. If you're an avid computer gamer, you've probably seen similar metrics to this. Um, it's just telling me how many milliseconds the round trip time from every one of these corresponds to me sending a packet to that server and that packet coming back. And this is the round trip time. Um, then there's some extra little information in here. This would be the sequence count. So you'll see it's steadily ticking up. And the TTL doesn't really, really want to get into that. If I do control C now, it's going to stop that and it's going to give me a nice little set of aggregate statistics for all of since I started ping. I sent a total of 87 packets. I got 87 responses. I didn't lose any responses. It ran for 86 seconds. And then these are my average latency, so on and so forth. So average, min, max, um, standard deviation. Cool. So I have config even on a system like this where you probably want to be a little bit careful actually using it to change things, at least unless you went up here and disabled this first. Uh, it's always handy if you just need to quickly see the status of something, if you want to quickly see your IP address, so on and so forth. Questions on I have config, king? So we call this up here, uh, on our systems, this is called Network Manager. Uh, so that's kind of the name of the package. And if it's sudo apt to get on remove Network Manager, it would remove this and rip it out altogether. Uh, so just if, if you see someone online referring to Network Manager, they're referring to the GUI side. I have fix that the underlying CLI side. There's another command called IP, which is slowly re replacing uh, a lot of the existing things. So it overlaps a lot right now. but. IP can do a lot of the same things that ifconfig can do. And ifconfig is actually going out of style and IP is coming into style. So everyone uses ifconfig today, but, well not everyone, some people use IP. Uh, but give it five years from now, we'll probably all be using IP because ifconfig is slated for deprecation. Um, so just know you can do pretty much the same things you can do in ifconfig. There's a man page for it. I'm not going to go into it right now, but uh, you'll see it doesn't even. Just running it by itself, I have to give it an option to get some additional information. Um, I'm not that well versed on IP, so I'm not going to sit here and make a fool of myself in front of you. But there's a man page, it tells you everything you need to know, so on and so forth. The one last thing that we'll note this is like Linux networking, super abridged. Um, like I said, I have config and IP, when you make changes with these, they're they're not static. They pretty much just last until you reboot your computer. If you want to make, if you're like working on a server and you want to, so if you're, if you want to make permanent changes on a GUI system like this, one way you can do is if you use the network manager, those changes are permanent. They'll exist across reboots uh, because you essentially save the settings. If you're working on a system that doesn't have that, you want to make permanent changes. Like many things in Linux, this is controlled by some config files on the back end. So if you do, uh, I don't know, first of all. So, slash etc. So the root etc. folder on your machine is where most of the config files that control all the programs and everything else on your machine get stored. Um, in this case, your network, uh, your network settings are stored in etc. slash network, and in particular, inside that folder, this interfaces file here. So you can look at that file. You'll need to be root to modify it, and I wouldn't recommend modifying it unless you know what you're doing, but we can just look at it. Uh, so mine's really simple, but essentially what this is saying is uh, there's like a series of, I, I can show you guys a better one. I remember my server in a second. This one's pretty basic. But uh, there's two interfaces listed here. The first one, auto lo, that's the loopback interface. And then the second one is specifying both, if it gives an additional interface, that I met one there. If you looked at the man page, you would essentially, there's a whole bunch of extra information you can add here, like you could specify the IP address here, so on and so forth. I'll look at a more traditional, um, one of those files in the sec card, you know? We can look at it right now, so. I'm gonna use the command we're gonna do next, don't worry too much about it. This won't work for you anyway. Um, 
So I, this is I basically is connected to a, another server that is just a real server, so it has no GUI. This file is how you actually configure it. And if we look at that, okay, so this is a little more traditional. But if we look at this, you'll see this computer actually has a couple of network cards. Um, it's running virtualization, which is why they're called VR instead of E, but they're essentially the same thing. So you'll see it has two different network cards. I'm configuring them separately, and I can do things like specify the external IP address, specify the net mask, the gateway, specify my DNS information, and then all of this bridging stuff has to do with the fact that this is a, it's handling some virtualization as well. But I have two of those, one for my external network, which is that public IP address you see up there, and one my internal network, which is the private IP address you see down here. This is how you would traditionally configure interfaces on a Linux, or so this extends beyond Linux. This is pretty standard on most Unix type machines. So the parameter DNS search says andysailor.com. Does that mean if we type andysailor.com into our browser, it'll send a request to this server right here? No. Resolve to the server? No. Um, this doesn't have any ability to affect the DNS system outside of right. itself. Uh, what the DNS search means is if I touch, if I, if I type in, so the name of this machine is Condor, um, and it's fully qualified domain name, so I just connected to it, it's condor.andysailor.com. So I have a separate DNS server somewhere that controls andysailor.com, and that I entered a record and said condor.andysailor.com corresponds to this IP address. Now, what that search does is it basically says if I type in something like ping bob, like and just bob, I don't give it the full address, right? I don't say like bob.google.com or something, I just say bob, it's gonna automatically prepend this to anything else. So this is basically like the default local search path. So if I nice. type ping bob, it's gonna interpret that as bob.andysailor.com. Nice. Or if I just type ping condor, it's gonna interpret it as condor.andysailor.com. Now the bob wouldn't work because there is no bob.andysailor.com, but there are a series of valid something.andysailor.com, and this just saves me the trouble of having to type andysailor.com every time, right? Now I can just type them in. It's kind of similar to the way a, uh, it's similar to like if you're on a Windows machine and it's connected to a domain controller or something, and that domain controller has some name associated with it, then anything on that domain has a name, and instead of having to type in the full name, you can just, it, it automatically assumes something, and that's what it assumes in this case. It's not a required field. I could leave it out altogether and things will work just fine. Um, the fields that are kind of important here are obviously address, net masking, gateway. This right. is basically the core network settings. DNS name servers, then these are the two servers I'm using when I do a DNS request. Mm -hmm. These are Google servers. Google operates public DNS servers, which tend to be so more reliable than most you guys. Those parameters out, they'll just automatically use whichever server. Uh, so if you leave those parameters out, it won't work on this machine. Um, if you're using DHCP, which, so these are configured for static IP addresses. Right. Instead of static here, I can put DHCP here, and then I can leave all of these settings out, and then it's going to do what your computer normally does, which asks your local router for that information. Part of that asking gets you these DNS addresses, right. but if you're using a static IP address and you don't specify DNS here, there's actually a second place you can specify DNS, although it's not supposed to do it there anymore. So, but if I didn't specify it anywhere, it wouldn't know about any DNS servers, and I wouldn't. I would only be able to use IP addresses. My DNS system would not. I see. Okay. Um, putting this here is actually kind of new. There used to be a separate file called resolve.com, and you listed all your servers in there. That file is now no longer supposed to be added directly. It gets auto-generated based off the values of this file. So. We're trying to consolidate all the settings into one file because it makes it easier than to spread across multiple files, and that's why it's here now. But that's the correct way of doing a static IP address on a modern Linux system. And you do need the DNS there to want to use it. Um, so you'll note that on my local address, I have no DNS specification because I don't need it. All of my DNS requests I'm going to send through my external interface. Uh, I could put them here. There are ways for all. You also notice there's no gateway here. So I'm basically saying anything that leaves my own network, I'm forcing it to go through this address because this is the only one that has a gateway, which is essentially where the traffic goes if it can't find it within the local network. This is just used for local connections. It doesn't know my internet traffic goes through there. But anyway, like I said, let's not get too bogged down in the networking because there's more pertinent things to get to and we can do a separate networking class. So kind of questions about this configuration, how these things work, anything like that?
in the file editable one so that if you can make changes to the file so that it gets reflected in the normal inbox settings. Um, I'm sorry, so again. No, if I make some changes to the interface file, so will it get reflected to the inbox settings? Uh, so the interface file, it won't right away. I can either reboot. So those settings are basically what it, it loads that file when it boots up. So, but you, I can also do something. Uh, so if I do, There's essentially a command you can run that'll shut down all your network interfaces and bring them back up, and it'll reload all the settings from that file. So when you change that file, if you don't want to reboot, you basically just reset the network, and it will then load the new settings. But just changing the file doesn't change anything until you either reload the network or reload the settings. So let's get down to the actual core. So that's all I'm going to say about network connections. Now let's take a look at. Make this a little clearer again. 